everybody. Welcome back to Trash Rats International, the only Trash Rats podcast that is still posting in 2023. I am your host, Simeon Jimmy, joined as always by Eggy Eggman Rodriguez. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, I'm celebrating the end of 2022 recap with a Taco Bell soft taco. I tell you, for $2, you can't find anything that's more of a ripoff in the fast food market these days. And the man who puts the international in Trash Rats International, the one and only Rusty Cage. Hello, everybody. It uh, is me, Rusty Cage. Florian, that's like your worst Rusty impression yet. Like, you did it better last time. You're not even trying this time. Hello, I am Rusty Cage. Okay, that's, that's closer. How you doing? This is cool. I'm back on Trash Rats, finally. <laughs> I finally invited you back on my show that I invented, and then yeah. I, I kicked you and Reactor off of it and yeah, just started and doing it over here. You stole all the intellectual property and, uh, you know, all those graphics that I, I handmade on my iPad. That's right. Yeah, I like that drawing of the rat, and I didn't want it to go to waste since uh, we deleted the Trash Rat server, and hopefully somebody deleted the Patreon. I hope nobody's still giving money to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can we check that? I... I I don't have access to it. Hmm. Oh, oh, that is a reactor thing. Well, this yeah, is so actually uh, news to me because last time I checked, uh, I was in the Trash Rat server, but now that you mentioned it, I'm scrolling around and I don't see it in my uh, list of servers, but I'm only on Discord about once every six months, so I guess there was plenty of time for it to go down. Yeah, people I'm were posting that things that were are like against the terms of service for Discord and stuff, and me and Rusty decided it's probably for the best to just move on. <laughs> It just got it. It was just like fucking people talking shit and trying to like uh, just get at us, get our attention by insulting us. I don't know. I, I it just didn't seem worth it to continue having it open. Like we didn't really go into the Discord or hardly communicating on it. No, and so. to be fair, the Simeon Jimmy Discord has a channel for Trash Rats news article submissions now. So really, the whole purpose of the Discord has been transferred over to mine. Okay. Well, yeah. it looks like there's still eight patrons. Oh my god. Reactor's <laughs> raking in at least 20 bucks. <laughs> Speaking of Reactor, um, I was going to invite him to be on this episode, but considering this channel currently has two strikes, I think I'm going to wait until the strikes go away. Ju okay. Just because he's like literally hanging out with Kanye West, and Kanye's the reason why I got these two strikes, because now the the YouTube bot is extremely sensitive about um, certain N words associated with Kanye West. I won't say which one, but Nation of Islam. <laughs> it could be a certain N word. So, uh, so Reactor, if he wants to come on, I'd love to have him on in uh, late February. <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> but uh, Rusty, you went to Reactor in Tim's compound, right? I haven't heard this story. What was that all about? Um, yeah, so the uh, reactor invited me up to go on like they have like a vlog show that's it's all about I guess the day to day life of working at the uh, the the Tim Pool compound. And he wanted me to be on an episode. It's kind of it's scripted. Uh, so, so it's like Tim that. Pool's cribs. Is there? A, <laughs> I'm kind of curious. So if you go to Monkey's, uh, you know he has a closet that's just like 30 black shirts. Does Tim Pool have a closet that's just like 30 beanies? Uh, I I didn't see all of his I didn't see his wardrobe closet, um, but it's kind of like making the band. I, I haven't seen that show in a long time, so you know you got the head honcho, uh, you know Tim, who just kind of pops up every once in a while to give his ideas or something, and then it's just everyone who works there trying to scramble around to record a vlog. And this so is I his home, like he lives here. I believe so. I don't really know like what what he's oh. disclosed but well yeah, like it's I mean, so weird like to to turn your home into like a full-time office and like your employees kind of live with you and stuff that seems like a weird lifestyle to me i don't think he lives in the main building but it this place is crazy he has like, like a I mean, trailer out back <laughs> <laughs> pretty pretty much uh like this this place was a, a fucking maze it was um it was like five or six stories tall had sub basements. I don't know how many basements. What the but fuck? I think it had Is two. it built into a mountain? <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Um, they had to blindfold me before I could, you know. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Like Mike Ermintrout kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. 
so that that was cool and then uh, uh tim invited me on his show at the end of the week because i was up there for five days well like the big show like, that like that he makes his 10 million per episode on yeah, yeah were, you were like, actually right, on well, there i was oh how'd that uh, go it went all right i was just kind of a um a secondary guest they had some uh playboy model or something on who is like now turned anti-woke or whatever so i was just i was like i don't really have that much to say about whatever politics everyone's talking about so i just chimed in whenever i felt like i had something to say well but it was here's my question and before you answer i want eggy to guess the answer but what words did tim use when he introduced you rusty cage on his show and I, there's two I'm, words coming to my mind that I'm hoping he did not say. The N word. <laughs> Literally, yes. Well, no. I mean, the silent K word. Oh. <laughs> but uh, Aggie, what would you guess he said to introduce Rusty? I'm gonna guess it was something along the lines of, and then we have um, famous musician who has done plenty of battles with YouTube's algorithm lately because you know Susan, she's really trying to suppress all of our free speech. We have Rusty Cage. Uh, he's, he's, you guys know the knife song. Um, you know, he's, <laughs> there we go. He's, he's been here. Uh, he's been on YouTube for a long time making music. And, you know, he's really being caught in the crossfire just because it's so sanitized nowadays. So, Rusty, tell us about how the sanitization of the platform has really been a detriment to your ability for long term viable musical success in your artistry and your performances. Yeah, that would that would have been nice. I, I, don't really remember what he said to uh, introduce me, but I, I think it instantly got cut short. Like right when he introduced <laughs> me, I started talking and then they all got distracted by uh, a comment or something else someone did. <laughs> There's like a $2 super chat, so they cut you off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was There was another thing too. Uh, this is a very technical thing, but they have cameras pointed at all the guests. And one of the cameras are is like all the way across the room. So whoever's sitting at the far end of this long table, this camera has a super wide lens or a super flat lens. So whenever it zooms in all the way up to you, it just crushes all dimensions. So it made my face look <laughs> ridiculously fat. <laughs> I was watching back at, I don't know, my, my ego. Was this before this or was, after Thanksgiving? Uh, this was before. Oh, okay. Well, that's weird. Yeah, right, right. So I wasn't actually... Uh, as fat as I was like after Thanksgiving. Right. Uh, it just has a filter applied because, listen, Tim can't be upstaged by such a <laughs> handsome blues musician who has taken the world by storm. He needs to make sure that he's staying in check where he needs to be at CEO mode. Yeah, I, I really was in the uh, the dunce chair. But yeah, no, man, that, it's crazy being out there. Everyone's just running around. Reactor, first off, he lives like a fucking psycho. Like, he's got like this, uh, an apartment that's inside of this uh, this building and it's just full of like funguses that he's growing and, uh, and bags of trash and like uh it, it's kind of like I, I described it as it, it's like uh in silence of the lambs whenever they first get into um buffalo bill's house wait what was it i'm trying to remember but there's just like bugs and weird shit all over the place that you know this is a serial killer that lives here <laughs> Well, as a deep and true Reactor fan, I, for one, am shocked at this revelation. <laughs> yeah, who would have guessed he has some weird, creepy shit going on in his compound? Yeah, it's like, uh, he lives like the Riddler uh, in the new Batman movie. Did you see anything that uh, has any alarm bells going off, Rusty? Like, should the FBI be notified about anything Reactor is up to? No, it just seemed like he was experimenting with, um, I don't know, just growing bacteria I, I no i don't think the fbi should be concerned in any way oh, okay and i signed in uh an nda that told me to say that did tim make you sign an nda no 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 oh wow like i finally found my photo of when i met tim uh and it's a photo of me asterios kokonos reactor and tim pool all together i finally found it and it's the day that i had a black eye so it's like the most horrendously horrible photo of me but uh, I'm next to these mega celebrities, you know? I don't know if I should post it. Post, yeah, maybe I will post it. Yeah, that was like, uh, that but, was before he was 
That was in like 2015, Ooh, and Tim specifically told me, do not post that photo, because so, <laughs> oh, okay. he did not want to be associated with me. That's why I never posted it, but now, you know, it's been so long, maybe I should. Yeah, it, That should be I the think. thumbnail to this video. <laughs> <laughs> me with my big black eye. Will he know? I mean... I'm, oh, fuck, I don't give a fuck if he does know. <laughs> Reactor has invited me there. to be um, on his show like you were, but... Yeah, I just haven't taken the time to do it. It's it was a lot of work because they're just they wake up super early and they just work all day on filming. So everyone in these vlogs, they're like people who work at the compound. Uh, so they're doing things like accounting or they're the driver. They're not like dedicated actors who are always going to be available. So there's just there's like two people who are trying to write and film you know, all the things in these episodic vlogs that are 22, 25 minutes long. Wait, so what did you and do in your episode? I wrote, like, all right, so I was playing a a sexual sexual harassment coach or expert. So you're not playing yourself in this. <laughs> no, no. So, wait, so are you coaching, coaching victims or are you coaching the victimizers? <laughs> yes, Teaching them yeah, how to do it? Was, that was the joke was, um, it was... Like they, they thought they were getting me to, you know, try to clean up the workspace and make sure everyone was acting appropriately. But instead I was teaching them how to properly sexually harass people. Mm. So you guys are uh, just doing like fucking comedy <laughs> sketches at Tim Pool's house? For what channel? What is this for? This one is well, Cast Castle is that was the thing that Reactor was always talking about. That was the channel that these were on, and I think my episode is like behind a paywall. What the so fuck? Wow. Yeah. You're supposed to be friends with these people even, and they're like <laughs> not letting you do shit. Yeah. What well, the hell? I'm going to go buy that episode. Writing. And I'm going to re-upload it on my channel, and I don't care if Pimple <laughs> strikes me, but is, this sounds like a very Kino concept that should be seen by at least 100 people. Well, was there even a woman in this sketch, Rusty? Or you're doing a sexual well, harassment sketch with just men? There was... I think one of the employees that was a woman there. And then uh, after I'd left, <clears throat> they got a, a Blair White was coming in like the next day. So I don't know if that counts, but she was at the end of the sketch. Oh, so she was in it. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Okay. And Tim said, all right, you're not going to be acting for this one. I want you to just go full ravenous animal all over all over Blair White. Yeah. No, I was I was long gone. She'll be Blair extra white when Rusty's done with her. <laughs> I think she uh I think she looks like a weirdo, but that's just my opinion. Oh great. Third strike incoming. <laughs> yeah, what'd you get striked for? Uh so Aggie and I did a stream where we tried to be the therapist and heal up a certain Austrian thinker. And uh -huh. Susan thought it was hate speech, which I disagree with, but what are you gonna do? They denied the the uh, claim. Wow. And, and the second one a... was uh, like three years ago, me and Biggs were doing a Minecraft Let's Play, and it said like episode six of Minecraft. So there's hate speech in this. They did not give a timestamp. They did not say what it was. I try to appeal, and they just say no. So it's like, okay, well, looks like they're just targeting random shit. And uh, I would not be surprised if a third one came down any day now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if it's like kind of the same deal as uh, what was happening to your channel back in the day where they're just, you know, a disgruntled employee or... Yeah, but that was at have... least six strikes all in one day. This, uh, it's been like over a month since the last one. That's why I didn't get to post anything in December because I had to wait two weeks for the strike period. But uh, if I make it to February, I should be safe. Yeah, so who knows what you're going to say in this video to... <laughs> Fuck me over. Um, I'll try to. I mean, have like a, a notepad so you can make timestamps if you need to cut something. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, YouTube's been a, a pain in the ass. It's it's crazy. Like uh, with the series I'm doing right now, with you know building the guillotine, I'm just seeing the huge uh, throttling of reach over that kind of started about like a year, year and a half ago. When you made like, the coronavirus song, it it may have been around there. It could have been um, right before, or yeah, it could have been that, or it could have been like the uh, Christmas noose song. Mm. But somewhere in that period, 
things just dropped off and it's like I can post a video that is really good uh you know according to myself others and like the people who watch and it'll get like a fifth or sixth of the views and then it just kind of dies off I don't know if that's like something that everyone's feeling if you just really have to post they really want you to post constantly now I'm not really sure what's going on but uh I, I'm I'm kind of just using this series as like the last ditch effort to the last hoorah yeah right and then if if there's something actually like internally flagged on my channel which might have seemed crazy before but since you know Elon Musk took over Twitter and exposed that this was happening to accounts on their site it seems very likely that this is also happening on all websites all social media and uh, most likely on YouTube as well well, I tell you what, Rusty, you know, I never uh, had such uh, big numbers, but I kind of got to the point this year, since we're recapping this year, and this year I uh, had, you know, uh, a couple channels go down over a 12-month period, and I thought the last thing I could think of, you know, becoming a fitness channel, which I enjoyed for at least a couple of months before just resuming exactly what I've always done. Hey, but, we've okay. made one truly Kino piece of uh, you know, gym video. It only cost, what, $40 out of your pocket when we got <laughs> fined for filming in there. But I think it's a genuine piece of Kino, and hopefully this channel does not get deleted because uh, that needs to be archived forever. That's right. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, some of these young bucks, these whippersnappers out here, you know, they're ready to sit down. They, you know, they're, they're stepping up to the table for the first time. They're ready to crank out, you know, 20 videos a month. You know, and a, an old bag like me who's just gotten knocked down one too many times. I said, you know what, I'm just going to go drive this truck. And uh, that's what I've been doing over the last four months now. You know, making uh, a hearty income that I spend none of. And so I'm just saving several thousand dollars. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, yeah, it really is. Like you have to post like like Turkey Tom, he's posting an hour long video every week. It's like how the fuck is that possible? I mean, I can understand it, you know, if if you're just doing research, writing and narration, um, it seems more plausible. But I'm like, there's no fucking way I could do that, especially if I'm filming and actually trying to like build something. Mm. Uh, someone was asking, they're like, yeah, why, you, you need to come out with these videos a lot more frequently. I'm like, it's it's not that simple. I mean, there's other people involved. There's like tools I need to get and like trying to uh, mess with the blueprints and then actually physically building a guillotine in my, my backyard, which, by the way, was started or the idea was manifested on Trash Rats, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, we were talking about I can't find the episode. I'd like to find it. But it was something... Um, we were talking about, like, holding politicians accountable, and we were joking, like, all right, yeah, let's just build a guillotine. In well, there is backyard. an episode called Rusty's Guillotine Will Save America, but that might have been us talking about the idea after it was formed. Did we, yeah, it might have been. Maybe we and engendered really the idea in an earlier episode and just don't know which one. Right, right. Yeah, and you started building that, like, back in May, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, I kind of forget when I started. Um, maybe, maybe June or July, and I could build it quicker. I mean, what really slows it down is like you only want to do so much progress on it, and then kind of have a story arc built around uh, how far it's been done. So it's like the amount of progress that's done needs to be episodic. Um, so I can't just like go straight and build it all uh, in two weeks and then write everything around it because it would just be out of order. And so it's it's like a pacing issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as somebody who's uh, been really enjoying the series from the beginning, I feel like there, there's some people out there that have these projects where they'll have a major video and then they have these small sort of update videos where it's really just to feed the algorithm or do an ad read. And I feel like those channels that I've seen, uh, it kind of cheapens it a little bit for me. You know, it's, it's not truly uh, atmospheric in the way that I want my YouTube Kino to be. So I feel like you've been delivering on the enjoyment uh, as a viewer very much so. Uh, I, no, but I can I see you, that. how, you know, it's not maybe the most algorithm friendly, but it's the kind of video and the way that it's being put together where 
even when I'm not getting a notification for it, I'm having somebody who's going to DM it to me and say, oh, Rusty just dropped a new video, and then I'm going right to it. But I, I think I have uh, generally gotten notifications uh, for the videos as they've come so far. Well, that's good. Yeah, they, they probably recognize um, you as a degenerate, so they're willing to show it to you, but not necessarily you know they're primed audience i'm not saying that you're a degenerate i think i <laughs> think I, that if we've logged a lot of watch time on your channel it's more likely to actually show us the what we sign up for in our right. sub box uh, rusty is, is there any ass, reason though. why you don't have any sponsorships on these videos yeah i mean i i could have sponsorships yeah i know you could i'm i want to know why you don't like i feel like you're leaving a couple thousand bucks on the table it's it's really because kind of what what eggy was saying like why i there's not like filler episodes as well just to feed the algorithm it's like a it's like i don't want to spoil the the pacing of each episode by you know cutting in a minute and a half mm -hmm. that could you know turn people off while i talk about fucking manscaped or speaking of guillotines uh do you need something to you know, cut your ball hair off with <laughs> well are these videos oh. making enough money just from ad revenue and stuff that you wouldn't even need the sponsorship because if you're only posting one video every two months you know i don't think yeah, anybody they're, they're would really... be that upset about a sponsorship if it you're taking that long on each video i'm just gonna hold off on sponsorships until i'm done i i, I don't want this is like for me this is something different than uh just a youtube video uh like i would like to have this be how I see it in my head and not spoil it with like, or cheapen it with filler or, you know, sponsors in it. Maybe, I don't know. This I, is I, a I gourmet, dry age Wagyu steak. This is not McDonald's french fries in the app for $1 <laughs> to hold you right, off so, and blast yeah, your neurons and dopamine receptors for a short period of time until it just becomes, you know, just another part of the assembly line. This is a voice of a generation being put to film, being put through to our eyes and ears with artistic merit sweet hey, i appreciate that yeah it's like it, you don't want to have like buy like a fancy steak and then a company's like hey can you put uh our brand's ketchup on top of it and you go what well, no no because then it wouldn't be how the chef intended you don't like a well done steak with ketchup like donald trump does i mean that actually does sound pretty tasty I'm no it fucking lie. doesn't just because your <laughs> chicken wings are well done doesn't mean <laughs> Uh, Rusty, is it true, did I hear this rumor coming from a little birdie named Rusty Cage, that after the guillotine series you're planning on not making videos for the Rusty Cage channel anymore, is that true? I'm trying to figure that out right now, I mean, again, so the idea with this series was I'm gonna do everything that I can to actually, like, make the best quality content Pure Kino. that I can. Yeah, like, I, I want this to be... Uh, the best shit I've done. I don't really want to be lazy on it. And if, and I'm also producing more than I ever have, despite how infrequently videos come out. But if this doesn't get my channel out of the algorithm slump, then I don't know what else to do on this main channel. Then I, I almost have to assume at some point, like it's either the frequency or there's actually a flag on some somehow on the internal side that's saying you know limit reach limit visibility that's what they said um whenever the twitter files came out that's the the tag they would put on certain profiles limit visibility so for the sake of how that would apply to youtube would be limiting uh impressions how many times the video is going to pop up on people's home feed because no one goes to like subscription page anymore they just go to their home feed and they hope to get recommended videos by the people that they subscribe to um and that's where the control goes back to youtube that's where they take it out of the hands of the creator and their connection with the audience the audience now only gets fed what youtube wants them to see unless they go out and personally seek it out um so i think if this if this series doesn't do it then yeah I'm, i have to assume that this channel may be poisoned somehow, and so I probably should start trying to upload stuff on a new channel and see if that works. Which, uh, that's gonna be but a, are you just going to do music on that channel then and like edited videos on a separate channel? 
Yeah, so on my second channel, um, Rusty Uncaged, is probably where I'll be uploading non-music things, and then I'll, I guess, go through the stupid process of converting my main channel into a music channel, which I had done in the past and then re like reverted it back because you lose a lot of control over playlists. Here's the thing, like, the way that the algorithm feels like it's set up right now is it's reoccurring watch time and how your videos perform. And so if I upload a 19 and a half minute video and it's like, oh, you have a watch time of, average watch time on this video is like seven and a half minutes. Uh, and then I follow that up with a two minute music video. They say your watch time in this one is two minutes and that's significantly lower. So it's underperforming. So they consider the music video underperforming. Therefore, they're probably gonna show it to less people, less impressions, less views. Uh, I don't know to what degree this is true because they don't really, they're not super transparent about how they tinker with all this. But so it's, it, you almost have to be formulaic in order to succeed in the algorithm. You can't be all over the place. And for a while, it seemed like that was working fine. I could have music videos side by side with other content. And the music videos generally in the past would do very well, like much, much better than um, any of my longer videos. But now it's like they completely underperform. So it's, I, I don't know. I, I probably just have to separate all the different styles of content that I'm putting out. That includes like the Rusty Cage show. I'm going to have to have that on a completely separate channel as well. The Rusty so Cage show. You talking about that like it's still alive, Rusty? I feel like no, it's, that's been gone longer than me. All right. Well, here's here's the thing. Is the reason why it's gone is because now I'm living in a tent in a, oh, there's in a deep field lore reasons. Yeah. Oh. So I you can't really have oh, now I'm live from the Rusty Cage studio and then uh, I'm back. It's, what's the real tent. reason since that's like the, the lazy reason why you, you can't do it? Oh, all my focus is just in the guillotine the series. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like in writing. Like I've, I've, I've spent the past three days just mostly researching water fluoridation and Nestle and like water rights and shit like that. Uh, Cause you want to kill the head of Nestle with your guillotine. Is that the idea? <laughs> I don't want to do I what I'd like is I would like people to uh be more aware of like the horrific corruption that's going on and for them to maybe not pass everything off as necessarily just conspiracy and to actually I don't know be invested in the world that they live in and um and, and that we we you know where we get everything from everything is kind of fucked up and corrupt and it's hard to it's hard to get people to care because it's like oh shut the hell up people just want to live their lives but yeah can, yeah counterpoint rusty ignorance uh, is bliss if i don't listen to those things it's like they're not happening they don't affect yeah. my life in any way how can you convince uh -huh. me to care about something that will ultimately just drain my happiness drain my energy drain my money and i get nothing out of it and we never win Knowledge is power. That's the first thing. So the second is, yeah, you can live in ignorance and then you don't realize why all these weird effects are happening around you. And if you go to the grocery store, how much are eggs? They're incredibly a lot more expensive than they used to be. Uh, I think a 12 pack was like eight dollars and 50 cents. Oh, maybe there. Fuck. I, I just got a 12 thing of eggs for, I think, like five, you know, five bucks, a little bit less than five. And that's probably expensive compared to five years ago. So, they, I mean, these are things of inflation. If we allow evil to exist and evil to uh, propagate in the shadows, then it will just become stronger. But stronger who's the evil growth. man who's increasing my egg prices? Because I would like to have a word. Well, I mean, that's a... That, that's uh, his a name rhymes with Gil Bates, and uh, he may or may have not <laughs> bioengineered an avian flu, which has killed 50 million chickens in this mm. uh, season. He may or may not be buying up all the farmland uh, in which to force out farmers for his own nefarious needs, whether it's food that he wants to produce that he can profit on or whether it's to lower the caloric intake of the nation as a whole in order to slow down reaper or um, uh, having more people. I don't know how I forgot that word. Procreation. So, 
I think that the yeah. real lesson to take away here is that when I was drinking all those raw eggs earlier this year, I was ahead of the curve. It's called the red <laughs> pill. And now the government's trying to stop me from being so healthy. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. you can't just have eggs. What are you fucking talking about? Well, speaking of eggs, I do want to go back to Eggy a little bit here. Uh, Eggy, is there any chance you'll return to YouTube streaming? Because it seems like uh, you kind of retired again. What's going on? Yeah, you know, uh, about five weeks ago, I just kind of, uh, I had been thinking to myself for a while, you know, prior to that uh, decision, I've been like, you know, <clears throat> I just felt like I had, uh, I, I was, you know, a bit played out, if you will. I felt like my live streams were just, uh, you know, they, they were uh, lacking that oomph, you know, they just weren't really what uh one what they once were i should say that they were just always what they once were and after doing it for many years and just basically doing the same thing constantly for many years i felt like uh you know a bit deteriorated it's like i wasn't uh bringing anything to the table anymore but i was still doing it out of a routine out of uh out of habit and i did enjoy doing it but at the same time you know i just kind of felt like that uh when I would do them, you know, I was, I wasn't showing my best side and I, you know, maybe it was a bit of a pride thing, but I felt like, you know, it was just not, it wasn't rubbing me the right way. And so I was like, well, and I had some other smaller reasons too, like, you know, I was overdoing it with the drinking maybe a little bit and that I was uh, able to just work and make money doing that and I didn't need to, you know, have some good gentlemen gamers out there need to, you know, basically bankroll my living expenses through YouTube and everything. I could just get it, you know, uh, the wagey way. So through all that, I decided, you know, one night after having it stew for a while that I was just gonna basically see myself off on the YouTube front. And uh, for the most part, it hasn't bothered me too much. Um, I know I've gotten, you know, some messages from people over this time period where they're desiring me to come back and uh, produce more things. They said, you know, it's just not the same. YouTube is just, it's, it's a dry landscape. You got other people. Uh, there's a guy who um, you guys wouldn't know, but there was uh, somebody who had been adjacent to my community called Lux Maximus, who was kind of like a red pill guy. And uh, he had just gotten cancer and he's basically like not doing so hot right now. So he was kind of, he, he kind of left. I uh, got, yeah, you know, Mr. Medicare, I think he's going to be done now because he's basically on his deathbed from what I'd heard. What? Yeah, right. Is he really that sick? Well, apparently he just did a stream in the last week here, and I think he had like one more stream scheduled ever after that, and then he was going to be just fully offline for all time. Damn. Oh, God. That you know, sucks. King Cobra, he's really ramping it up now. He's getting arrested. People are thinking he might be going <laughs> off the rails. Oh, we'll you know. get to Cobra. Don't worry, Eggy. I, I had questions about that coming down the <laughs> pike because uh, they say never meet your heroes. And like literally, King Cobra comes he calls into your live stream you talk to him and then like less than a week later you decide you're never streaming again what did cobra do to you did he infect you with his boglum juices <laughs> and you're like ah, i don't know about this tubes this is most definitely not what's up what's the story how did you meet cobra and what was it like uh well we just have a lot of uh mutual acquaintances at this point basically uh so I couldn't even tell you exactly when, maybe, because uh, it had been over a year for sure, but uh, he had, well, his, some of his people that were close to him organically were watching me, like, uh, actually, I actually didn't know this, this was probably just in the last few months, I got a message from Seizure Robot, who is, like, considered one of the great paragons of knowledge in the uh, Cobraverse, and he'd been following me since, like, 2014, according to him, so he'd been following me from, like, the very beginning. But other people as well. So basically, like I was known by a lot of people in, that were close to Mr. Cobra, and uh, you know, as time went by, they would gradually, uh, if he wasn't streaming, they they would come to my stream instead. And I got to uh, knowing them and talking with them and everything. So I basically had, you know, connections to the inner circle. And uh, yeah, that night I was streaming and drinking or whatever, and they said, "Oh, check your DMs for the you know private video chat link with Cobra that we're all in." And I happened to click on it, and there he was. And I screen capped, or I, you know, I screen recorded, or whatever, put it up on my screen. You know what what, what the video was. So uh, I'm not sure if Cobra was even watching the stream. Actually, no, he was. I remember because he came into the chat, and I and I moderated him, <laughs> turned him into a mod. 
And he was. You uh, let any criminal moderate your <laughs> chat, huh? He, he's in the chat. He's like f Jannies. He's posting Sneed. He's spamming like Sneed feed and seed in the chat, and it was really him. So we, you what know, we gave fuck? him a good. Cobra posted yeah. Sneed. Yeah. Yeah, huh. it was real. He Sneed posted. So, uh, so King Cobra, um, I kind of recognize the face, but what what did this guy do? He got arrested. Yeah, he over, was recently... over Christmas, uh, he was out with his family and got a little too drunk in public, it sounds like. Oh, Jesus. Okay. But, Eggy, what, what do you know about it? Well, I think that people are still waiting to uh, get some more details. I think it's still a little bit shrouded in mystery at the moment. But what I thought was funny is that uh, one of the few times I've been cited that's on my public criminal record is also public intoxication. So <laughs> just goes to show, you know, that uh, great minds him, think alike. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People, they contacted the police department that issued the arrest or the citation or whatever uh, for an FOIA uh, body cam request. It sounds like, you know, they pretty much swarmed everybody online that follows Cobra all like started filing requests all at the same time. And I think it put them on a on a defensive stance to where they were uh, like, oh, I don't know if we're going to give that to anybody, but we'll see what pans out yet. Uh, I think the latest suspicion was because Cobra was like, well, usually when I drink, I don't get violent. It's not like me to get violent. Uh -oh. um, so I think pretty much sounded like maybe they stopped for gas at Loaf and Jug. Cobra got out and said he was going to get some alcohol. Clint might have said, no, you don't need any more. You're already like almost blackout drunk. <laughs> and then Cobra basically, you know, went into, uh, you know, his temper got the best of him in the public area. Yeah, it sounds like People he was in scared. like the parking lot area and cars were honking at him to get out of the way. And he was like screaming. Well, and the thing is, too, is that typically uh, if someone's intoxicated like that, um, and it's a point, it's such a point of intoxication where there is a concern. Usually they're just going to be, you know, released into the care of their sober party, which would be Clint and kind of just taken off property of the uh, loaf and jug. But so it had to have reached a level to where, you know, it was basically out of Clint's control and he needed the law enforcement to step into the situation. So that's I think that's about all we really know right now. I haven't looked at any updates or anything in the last handful of hours. Um, the Kiwi Farms, they've been getting DDoS all day, so it's hard oh. to get on there and read. Rusty, have you had any uh, run-ins with the law while intoxicated in public? Uh, no. No public intox from Rusty Cage. I don't know if I can believe that. Just yeah, only yeah. last year when we were at the bar and I was getting hauled out. <laughs> Yeah, but you know that, that's all handled internally for the most part. So, yeah, there's no law against throwing an empty can at a bartender. I don't know if they can arrest us for yeah, that right. one. Yeah, right. No, I, I do pretty well at uh, uh, staying away from uh, public intoxication, just avoiding police in general whenever I'm outwardly intoxicated. And you're just really good at drunk driving too, so you don't have to worry about getting pulled over. No, I sober up really quick. You just you drive better when you're drunk because then you really pay attention. When you're uh, sober, you just you lackadaisical, don't really give a shit. Oh, I'm on TikTok. I'm driving with my <laughs> <Yeah. knee. laughs> Rusty, uh, how do you respond to the accusations that you are a quote unquote Kia boy? You know, that people have seen you in Gainesville uh, whipping the thing around, doing tornadoes down the street. What, Kia Soul? Is that what he's driving now? Wait, who said that? No, no, I'm not driving a. I'm not oh, you, driving say, a uh, you said you were driving, you were on TikTok. I thought that's what you meant. Oh, uh, I mean, listen, my car is, is nothing cool. It's a, um, a VW uh, Golf, so it's like some, you know, lesbian hatchback. <laughs> I, I should get a muscle car. I just, uh, you know, a car is a car. I'm probably hoping that this car is going to last me until you know, self-driving becomes a thing and I can just finally not have to do anything to get to the bar. <laughs> That's some good innovation. But yeah. uh, just to finish up on the one question, uh, I pretty much see myself. I, I don't know. I still don't really know uh, what my plans are as far as coming back on YouTube. Well, but, clearly uh, you're willing to, I mean, be on this show. You know, if you're going to still do stuff with me, why not? Just uh, if you ever feel like it, just hop back on stream and hang out. Yeah, I mean, you know, when it, when it uh, feels right. And then also I'm also keeping it open uh, as, you know, if something comes up in the future where... Uh, the employment uh, comes to any kind of 
issue we're already been understaffed as it is if there's any kind of issue where all of a sudden the employment is put into um, a bit of uh, shaky ground then I might uh, it might give me a second win to really try and come back and hit it hard again but for right now I'm still just kind of uh, my creative juices are a bit dehydrated yeah. you know I'm, I'm eating my vitamins and drinking swamp water and uh, seeing <laughs> if maybe maybe they'll bubble back up like a dank magic brew uh, but for right now I'm still just kind of been uh, in the background well hey don't yeah, forget as to. soon as you get fired from the 5g tower trucking company or whatever the fuck you're doing uh you can always move here you know there's still open houses all around me and um, uh, the, you know we can do some daily streaming make it approximately 20 bucks a day like wings of redemption has been doing i got about ten thousand dollars cash uh saved up from the job so far so you know at this rates throw I'll it straight in dogecoin to... right now <laughs> the dog Are that Dogecoin is based off of is like on its deathbed as of today. Like it has cancer or something and it's going to die. Know. So I think Dogecoin, as soon as the dog's dead, it's going to skyrocket. You got to buy in right now. Sorry, somebody has to do it if Reactor's not here. Well, you know what? Uh, I will... Uh... I'll look at what was that Coinbase? I don't know. I was on uh, use Binance. Robinhood. They're trusted and they never rip <laughs> off their customers. <laughs> I was on Binance. I think Binance just was like, then they just something horrible happened to them in the last like month. Yeah, I think they um they might have uh, went bankrupt as well. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right thing, uh, but they definitely were involved with the whole um, FTX. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The whole fucking crypto market is scary and weird. I just but, do. I, the only thing I buy is Monero because that's been a trusty. It's pretty much as close to like the dollar uh, translated over to crypto as it gets for the most part. That's like the only thing I buy anymore. Well, boys, we've done, you know, pretty much a full episode just catching up with the three of us. Uh, if you guys have time, should we end this now and do like a part two where we actually talk about the news or you guys have somewhere you need to be? I mean, I'm down. Uh, I'm down to do. What, like a two-parter? Yeah, yeah, we can just do another episode real quick. Uh, just talk about the news for about 40 minutes. Sure. Well, sure. okay, well, we'll see you boys in the audience again sometime soon with some real news on the Trash Rats. <laughs>